Your brain is made up of billions of interconnected cells known as neurons. Neurons are specialized cells that are able to communicate with each other by producing electrical signals upon stimulation. These electrical signals are responsible for how we perceive the external world around us. When we are exposed to things that stimulate our senses, specialized receptor neurons are able to convert this information into electrical signals. Subtleties in the intensity of the stimuli are encoded via patterns of electrical firing. Eventually, the signals from receptor neurons reach your brain, specifically your cerebral cortex, where they combine with signals generated locally. When many neurons are stimulated at once, or a neuron is stimulated many times in a short period, these electrical signals can be passed on to other neurons throughout the brain. Each neuron is connected to thousands of other neurons, and their communication allows us to accurately make sense of the world around us. As psychologists, we are interested in finding out more about how the brain works. One important technique that can be used is known as electroencephalography, or EEG. The EEG was invented in 1929 by Hans Berger and works by passively measuring and recording the net electrical activity happening in the brain using electrodes placed above different brain regions. In the brain, billions of neurons fire every second. While individually, these electrical signals are too small to measure, altogether, they add up to create a larger, measurable electrical field on the surface of the scalp. Since 1929, EEG technology has come very far, but it still works on this same original principle. EEG recordings give us two main types of information. First, Different regions in the brain are most active during different types of activities, and this is reflected in an EEG recording. During an experiment, this allows us to map which brain regions are most active when a subject performs a certain task or responds to a certain stimulus. Recordings of brain activity can also be classified into distinct patterns known as brain waves based on the frequency of electrical signals in a specific region. Different types of brain waves are associated with different types of activity and mental states, and this is also reflected in an EEG recording. Using an EEG recording along with known information about stimuli associated with different brain regions and waves, we can determine more about how the brain responds to new stimuli. For example, when people listen to groovy music, EEG recordings may show that brain areas known to be associated with both hearing and movement are most active. This can be used to help us explain why groovy music makes us want to move. However, EEG does have its limitations. We may be able to tell what brain regions are active, but we usually cannot determine specific details about internal processes such as the thoughts or emotions that someone is experiencing. Nevertheless, EEG is a very valuable tool for studying the human brain. The Live Lab is equipped with EEG equipment, allowing us to collect EEG recordings from up to 32 participants simultaneously, more than anywhere else in the world. This gives us the unique ability to study EEG recordings in the context of complicated social interactions and shared group experiences to see how multiple participants respond to each other or a shared stimulus. This specialized facility has allowed researchers at the Live Lab to perform studies in many different areas. For example, in one study, EEG recordings were simultaneously taken for 15 participants as they watched a lecture in the Live Lab's theater space. At random points throughout the lecture, participants were asked whether their mind was wandering. EEG data from the lecture was then used to determine how specific EEG signals correlated to mind wandering. It was found that while EEG signals could be used to predict mind wandering, the specific signals were very unique to each participant and differed between individuals, despite all having watched the same lecture. This is just one instance of how EEG has been used in the Live Lab to compare individual responses to a shared stimulus. EEG is thus a very valuable tool for research in the Live Lab. To learn more about research involving EEG in the Live Lab, check us out at livelab.mcmaster.ca.